Welcome to the Sea Otter Classic 2022. Uh, yeah, you're not watching GMBN Tech, you're watching EMBN. Of course, uh, I'm here reporting for EMBN in place of Steve Jones and Chris Smith. Neither of them could make it out here, so I get the job to come and look at all the cool electric mountain bike related tech. Now, don't forget, there's going to be loads of other tech you're going to be able to see over on GMBN Tech as well. It's also really applicable to e-bikes. I reckon there's going to be some pretty cool stuff here. And I'm going to start by having a look at that brand new canyon. Okay, so we're on the canyon stand. We're taking a look at the brand new canyon spectral on. Now, I've got last year's or the year before's version of this, and the difference is insane. So straight out, look at the size of the seat stays on here. These are seriously chunky now. And you might notice inside that massive down tube now, there's increased battery capability. Now, if you rewind back in time a minute, four years back, they launched with a 500 watt hour battery. One I'm riding has got a, I don't know actually, I don't even know what size battery, but this is available with 720 watt hour battery and a massive 900 watt hour battery in there. And they achieved that space in there to fit the enormous battery by moving the motor up and backwards. So slightly different positioning from before, still running the EP8 system on there, still using the four bar linkage, but this system is a bit more similar to the current Spectral Nun e-bike. And you've got all the geometry tips in there. So you've got extended geometry now. So I think it's a 25 mil difference in reach across the four sizes there. So basically a brand new bike from them. And if the last model was anything to go by, this is gonna be astonishing. Now you've got to admire how Canyon have managed to fit in that massive battery by moving the motor casing up and backwards slightly. I mean, again, you get a bit more support, a bit more protection down here, but an added thing I've just noticed on here is the pivot point is slightly higher. Now I wouldn't go as far as calling this a mid pivot bike, but still a low pivot bike, but it's right on the chain line. So this chain size is optimized for the bike. So this is gonna be a supremely active bike. Of course, it's using a four bar there. So whatever you're doing the braking, you're still gonna have an active rear end. So it doesn't matter what you're doing, you're pedaling, you're braking, you're coasting, that is gonna be stuck to the ground. You might also notice up above here, you can see the Frankenstein bike. So this was the prototype. Now, something that's really cool about this is it's got a bit of a lugged design approach with a carbon tube in here. Now, this isn't the first time we've seen carbon tubing used with lug design here for prototyping. Of course, the Atherton bikes are using a similar concept there. Mind you, this is just for a prototype to position the battery and get the motor casing system correct, as well as proof of concept to make sure the geometry is correct on the bike. But I love the fact it's not just Atherton's are experimenting with this. I mean, mind you, the Atherton stuff does look a lot nice. So this is a prototype, of course. Very cool, they're just displaying it though on the stand. But from that to that, not a bad approach, eh? What do you think of their new Canyon Spectral on? I'm ordering one, got to have one. It looks sick. Now, moving on from that brand new Canyon, it's got the 900 watt hour battery in there. They're not the only brand that do it. Norco have been doing this for quite a while. And look at their bikes. So where do I start with Norco? So I've actually loved this brand from the very beginning. I've ridden the A-lines, I've ridden the Shores, I've ridden the downhill bikes, I've ridden loads of stuff that they've had. And they've always used a four bar system on there. They've always had really good suspension on their bikes. But something they're doing these days is they've got basically a size specific geometry. So the chain stays will grow proportionally. So if like me, you're going for an XL, the chain stays would be a bit longer than they would be on the smaller sizes. And the effect of that is you get a bit more rear end traction, kicks your body weight back in the middle of the bike. So if you're extremely small or extremely tall, like one of those two extremes, try and look for a bike that has got size specific geometry because it does make a massive difference, especially on something like that where you really want to get the horsepower down. I also really like the way they've mounted the shock on this. So the piggyback is around at the side, so you've got easy access there to the lockout lever. Uh, you might have seen the video that Jonesy did where he's actually testing lockout against having it fully open. I think for a long time he was probably guilty of running his bike open thinking, oh, I can just run it open, what's the difference as an e-bike? But actually, using your lockout, it helps the bike stand up, it'll give you better ground clearance as well when you're riding, and obviously you're going to save time as well when climbing. So if that's important to you, that's a cool feature. But just look at the thing, it's awesome looking there. So Norco Sight VLT. Like I said, that will accept up to the 900 watt hour battery. And you can see the different size batteries just here. They will accept the 540, 720 and the 900. Okay, so you're probably gonna recognize this one from the video that Jonesy did with Danny McCaskill recently. Of course, this is the Heckler MX wheel setup. So you've got 27 and a half on the rear, 29 on the front. The two different carbons, the C and the CC on here. Uh, and what Jonesy would call a lightweight e-bike at 22 kilograms, but uh, being from GMBN Tech, I can't really say lightweight and 22 kilograms in the same sentence but it's pretty flipping nice, isn't it? Uh, running the Shimano system on air, 720 watt hour battery. I mean, Santa Cruz, isn't it? They know how to build bikes, that's for sure. 
So one of the coolest things about the Sea Otter Classic is, yes, you have loads of huge brands everywhere, but you also get to see super cool stuff like this simple bike here that Oscar has just been showing us. Now have a look up close. Obviously, you can see there's a few different things going on. You can see the high pivot, but look at the pivot point on here. There's actually a Chris King headset operating there. It's got a Shimano EP8 system, a 520 watt hour battery, Chris King wheels, basically front and rear. Um, I mean, man, this thing is seriously cool. Do you want to tell us a little bit about it? Um, it's our 20th year anniversary, so we decided just to basically kind of flex a little bit. Uh, we're not in the business of building simple bikes anymore. We mostly do private labeling, so we do if you have a name that you really like and you're great marketing, we'll build the bikes for you. Um, we specialize in tie frames mostly, but this is kind of one of those things, uh, you get to a certain age where pedaling gets hard. So a motor's perfect for me. <laughs> and, and tell us how you got to the sort of single pivot design and why you chose to go with the headset for the pivot. You know, that, that was mostly marketing at Chris King. They, they had something available for me. Um, I really didn't know what to use at the time. And when they pulled it off of his marketing desk, literally was like, I got something for you. Um, we ran with it. Uh, I really liked the older Heckler, the Santa Cruz Heckler and kind of base it around that. Mind you, I've been wanting to do this bike for almost 20 years, right? Once shocks got really, really good and everybody started complicating their designs in, in suspension, I was just like, well, I felt silly doing a single pivot, but single pivots back, uh, back in charging. So I'm like, hey, I think it's time to do it. So this is, this is what we came up with. Put a little idler wheel on it. We wanted to make the rear end stiffer. So we, we built a, the triangle a little bit slimmer and not so flimsy at the dropout um, and this is my interpretation of a single pivot uh, uh, high, high uh, single pivot yeah it looks bang on point with the geometry as well it's pretty long quite a steep seat angle pretty yeah. slack yeah. I love it I think this is a seriously cool bike thanks man I appreciate it, it thanks cool. for thanks for sharing it yeah, to absolutely. us I love this stuff awesome. uh, enjoy enjoy the festival I appreciate it you do so Giant are arranged are doing amazing e-bikes. So you've got the massive Super Enduro spec Rain, uh, offering more travel, clearly. But this one is a Trans. So this actually is a bike a bit more after my own heart. So 150 mil travel, it's a lighter weight offering. But the thing I want to talk about on here, other than the fact the bike is pretty flipping good, is the fact it's using Fox Live Valve. Now, over on GMBN Tech, we were taking a look at the flight attendant system for SRAM, uh, which we haven't actually seen on an e-bike yet. Uh, but the Fox Live Valve is on here. So Live Valve could well be one of the coolest innovations out there. So the whole concept is it automatically adjusts to the terrain that you're riding in real time. It's a live valve system, uh, fully automated. So essentially it gives you the amount of compression damping between almost fully locked out to completely open. And it manages that for a series of sensors on the bike. It's a really incredible system. And obviously it's so intuitive to use on an actual e-bike itself. So we've got the new Moterra here from Cannondale. This is really cool to see actually. So quite a lot has changed on the bike. So you're running the Bosch system on here with the 750 watt hour battery. Uh, you're running 85 newton meters of torque down here. In fact, while well, my hand's down here, check out the big skid plate on the bottom. Kind of like something you expect to see on a trials bike. Slightly refined approach. You've got a keyless display on the top here. You can also hook up your lights. They actually recommend using the Lazine light on here. You can control it from the smart controller up on the bars here. Really intuitive actually, just with where it sits with your thumb. And of course you've got built-in fenders on here and you've got proportional response suspension. So essentially what that means is no matter what size frame you've got, there's a slightly different configuration with the pivot points, meaning the suspension is optimized per size of bike. What that means in English to you is doesn't matter if you're on a smaller size or the larger size, the suspension is going to feel exactly the same between them. So it's no compromise, essentially. Real cool approach. What do you think of this? Pretty bad boy, isn't it? What? can you say about this so obviously i'm a massive yeti fan i don't know how jones and chris feel about them but this is a bike that needs to be in this video so this is a team issue version of the 160e running shimano ep8 system down there with a 625 watt hour battery tucked away in that down tube unreal looking bike but it's got a few very cool features about it so you've obviously got an e-tuned fork on the front there running slightly different tune to what you expect to find on a regular fox 36 or a 38 and then you can change the progressiveness of the rear end of the bike by just changing the orientation of the chip down here. Don't forget this does not change anything in terms of geometry and you might get like two or three mil difference in travel. 
but you get 25, 30 or 35 percent in terms of the progressiveness of the rear end of the bike. So that in combination with the shock that's got four-way adjustability and also you've got the bands on the inside for adjusting the air volume, you've got a back end that's almost infinitely tunable. Now that is a really, really cool feature. Dare I say, probably quite a racing spec feature. But yes, you're keen to say that if you've got one of these bikes, you've got to play with it. You've got to try that out and take it out and change it around to find out what it is that's going to work best for you. I love things like this because this really does mean you can tune a bike for your own feeling. Now, just one other little cool thing I've noticed on here, this one being a team edition one, it's got one of the EDC tools tucked away in the, uh, in the head tube there. That's something that Steve Jones could uh, make use of because apparently his left-hand cranks keep falling off. If only he had a 5mm Allen key on his bike to sort that out, or an 8, you could have one more of those. Yeah, I think that's going to come out in a hurry. <laughs> Yeah, that's <laughs> Now, the whole thing with e-bikes is getting your power down onto the ground, but also managing that traction. Now, there's a few ways you can do this. You can opt for a tyre with a harder compound, so it rolls a bit faster and you manage your battery that bit better. Or you can go the opposite way, like Jonesy likes to, and go for the softest, most aggressive tyres you possibly can. And these two tyres here are right up your street, if that's what you're looking for. So the first one, the Argotel, this is a brand new tyre from Continental, brand new casing, it's this Hydrotel. Now yeah, it is a mud spike, and normally mud spikes tend to be a hard compound rubber, so the idea behind that is that they latch into that mud, but it does make them terrifying when it comes to rock, roots and things like that. But these are really soft compound, but look at the buttress design on those knobs. So they have really high stack height, but that's designed to give them support. I'll tell you what, that thing I reckon is a secret weapon for an e-bike. Now, there's also some other tyres in the range you might be interested in checking out. I'll talk about them over on GMBN Tech, so head over there if you want to find out more about the range. So there's five designs available there, but those two, I reckon, are the hot tickets for e-bikes. I absolutely love seeing what the big brands do when they try and do something different like this. This is the patron from Scott, run 160mm travel, uh, 750 watt hour battery in there, tidy little Bosch motor housed in here under this fairing shock hidden inside the frame there using the technology that we'd seen on the bold cycles previously and then the engineers teamed up with scott to start developing their spark which you've already seen under nina Scherter in the sort of the nun e-bike realm but seeing this new approach housing a shock inside the top tube there i mean i think that looks absolutely beautiful and there's just a little simple cover here so you can make your adjustments to your rebounding and compression anything you want to fiddle with and the cover goes back on I love the integration. And then, speaking of which, look at the cable routing at the top there. Goes straight into the big top cap fairing there on the stem. And you've even got integrated fender and lights built in. Like, this is really quite refreshing to see. And I really like where Scott are going with this. Now, Propane are another brand that are really starting to do things right. Now, back in the UK, we don't, we don't really see them too much. But I really do think the tide needs to change. Because bikes like the Akana here are definitely doing it for me great suspension platform on here you've got 630 watt hour battery system on there shimano system on there i just think everything about it looks good i'm loving the raw alloy feel as well it's quite refreshing actually to get away from the carbon for a bit there's something about it, it just looks right to me geometry on all propane bikes is absolutely bang up to date uh, of course this one is a uh, mullet setup on here you can run the 29 or the 27 and a half rear wheel on here options open to you adjustable travel between 165 and 170 mil pretty banging looking bike what do you think of that although not necessarily anything you haven't seen before look at the paint job on this it's part of the soil searching program so it's basically giving back to trail builders i tell you what specialized and know how to build a bike and this up close the finish on this is unreal tan walls with it as well those butchers just the whole bike looks absolutely fantastic i've got to say the kind of a brand that annoys me because there's nothing I can't argue with. I really love what they do. What are you saying about the soil searching paint job on this? There's no way that I couldn't talk about this bike. So this is the Level RR by Mondraker Bikes, a Spanish company that infamously invented forward geometry, or at least introduced the world to what we now know 
as the geometry we see. So way back in 2014, they essentially chopped stem length down to 10 millimeters and they added the 60 millimeters you would have had in those days by having a 70 mil stem. They put that on the front center of the bike, make, making that front center much longer. So your front wheel was out in front of you, gave you loads more traction, loads more stability, loads more confidence. And then today they've got bikes like this, which is just unreal looking. Running the Bosch system down here, you've got Olin shock on the back. You've got a 38 fork on the front. I mean, look at the thing. These things are absolutely stunning. Now, as far as the suspension system goes on these, they use a zero suspension system, which was co-developed with Cesar Rojo, who's an ex-World Cup downhill racer. Now, this suspension system is insanely progressive off the top, so it barely even needs compression damping or assistance from the shocks. It's a really efficient system. If you want to ride insanely hard through stuff, that might be really good for you. Well, there we go. Everything from turquoise super bikes through to homemade bikes using headsets as a main pivot. Hopefully you enjoyed some of the tech on today's video here on EMBN. Join us again tomorrow for more tech from the Seattle Classic.